Flame Swordsman actually has competitive application. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Logan Jai out here with Mr. Trevor ran a box tournament and we have your breakdown for you here. This is all post maze, this is all post the good stuff that you want to see. So, yes, we had double rescue ace in the top cut for this, which I'm, I'm actually not that surprised. You know, a lot of the TCG, you know, even with Airlifter at one right now, a lot of people are kind of pushing around these different ratios, different discussion points, and wanting to try out different things with the deck to try to get the maximum results, and I'm, I'm not a lot surprised. We also have two Purely in here as well. I guess the more the meta shifts, the more that Purely can be the, you know, the old reliable pick, you know. It's the consistent monster that you want to bring to the table and try to do well with. We, we've seen this over and over again. Now, winning our event was actually pure snake eyes. And I think a lot of people need to probably reevaluate a lot of the snake eyes stuff and retake a look at how this deck functions. Because I think a lot more people are gonna get very blown out by this deck kind of going forward here. Uh, we also had a Tier Elements deck managing to kind of come out of the woodwork here and do its thing, which, I mean, okay. Uh, I didn't expect to see Tier still kind of sitting here being a rogue contender. We also had one Fire King deck, so even, you know, with some crazy changes in the meta here, you know, Fire King's stepping on into the light is good. And the last list for this is actually an Infernoble deck piloting off the brand new Flame Swordsman cards. You know, we lost a soul, but you know, having access to the Flame Swordsman cards being Warrior actually helps out. Now let's pass one over to Deckless. Winning our event here is none other than the power of pure snake eyes. And yes, Birch Oak and uh, you know, the Flamber's Dragon. The whole tree squad is actually here to help us out. We're also playing Double Divine Temple out here, which is really good. Now this is the thing that definitely makes this deck good. Let's you place a Dia Bellstar from your hand deck or graveyard face up in the Spell and Trap card zone. And then during the end phase, you can banish this card from a graveyard target a monster, treat it as a continuous spell card and special summon it. Yes, this card. So you, typically you can do some innovations with like IP after crystallizing it and you know with the Flamber's Dragon and your opponent just stares at it and goes, um, what in the world is going on here? Yes, this deck's end boards get very, very scary. Also, you know, you see the double bonfire here, the double populace. It's a, it's a very scary thing to actually see. And I see that this build is also playing a copy of Silvera, which is actually pretty good to see. So overall, I think this is this has got some stuff to talk about. Next up here, huh, well, so this is the evolution that we go through here. Oh man, you know, just sticking some bonfires in our deck. Nothing to see here, everybody, nothing. Nothing to consider out here, you know, sticking some bonfires in the deck to kind of get the extra little gas in here, I think is uh, is pretty good. Uh, now, we are playing the one copy of the subversion in here. Um, this this is something that you can kind of, it depends on how, the, how you're feeling when it comes to the deck builds. Do I really think that we need the subversion or, you know, can we cut out without this? And I think for the most part, yes, you probably do want to play this. Um, this card is incredibly powerful for what you want to do with the deck. And hi, Scattershot with Sprint. I love the fact that we've been seeing a lot more ace decks heading towards the fact that you can mill off a Scattershot, steal a game, ping your opponent for 500. Yeah, it actually happens. I know, it's it's big sad. All right, hey, it's our Purely deck. Oh, okay, so we have seen a lot of Purely innovations that have been heading towards two leaps as of late. Um, this build actually kind of tries to break that mold and just plays the one, which, which is fine. Um, but this build, technically, if they do need to get into a grind game here, they have the shufflers, Keldo and Mudora, because, I mean, these are just discard fodder. All right, these are going to serve the same purpose in a lot of the matchups that I think you would be bringing these in for anyway, and I think that's fine. Uh, we also have, wow, <laughs> enough gas here for some crows. We also have enough gas for some talents, which is fine. And we're also triple desires. 
This is not something that I've seen, but I mean, they're maximizing on the field spell anyway. So, you know, they're just going to use this to net resources, net key hand traps, and use those resources as enough of a stepping stone to continue to play the game. So this is, this is all universally fine. All right, we have our tier deck here. Now, I do see some little cute things down here. The first thing I see here is... We are doing Hell Should All Hollow, which our little fire attribute guy, but you know, you do care about the little free mill functionality with this. Uh, we are actually main decking the Shyama. I've seen some arguments for maining slash siding Shyama. Uh, you can go with either or, it really just depends. And instead of doing, you know, our good friend King of the Swamp, we're actually doing Beast King of the Swamp. Acts as a natural water monster as well. Uh, just another little fusion subber, just kind of help you along with your way. Uh, but most of the main deck, I mean, your six card splash package, no Dumal Tef, is fine. We're doing the one copy grief in the main. Post side decking, I see that we are also bringing in Keldos, and we're actually side decking our Fenrirs instead of mating them. I still think that Fenrir is a stupid good card, and you should probably give some consideration to this card where you actually can uh, steal some free, free, free games. Fifth place down here. Hi, Fire Kings. Now, uh, this is Fire King Snake Eye. I see that 48 cards, by the way. They really wanted to tack this out. The fact that they're playing a sales, or two sales ban in here, giving them the chance to basically blink whatever is going to be an issue for them is actually kind of interesting. I, I hadn't really considered much of a tech choice out of this. Um, now, obviously, you know, shutting off something that might be a key to you can obviously hurt, but I don't think that really matters. Also, interesting choices for their Maximus targets down here. I do see that, you know, obviously, Garua, you've also got some Tri-Brigade stuff along the way, but that's, that's literally about it. Interesting. And we also have the good old Snatch Steel. <laughs> I love the random choices that these builds can actually kind of pull out out here and actually have working for them. Also, double skill drain. Okay, I uh, I like this. A little bit, needs a little bit of work, but okay. Next up, now this was really cool. So this is the Fighting Flame Swordsman Infernoble, where basically you're using this warrior package here to kind of help you out for your basically requirements out here for what you actually want to have, um, especially getting, you know, your free equips, the Fighting Flame Step, your one Swordman Realm, your one Salamander Fusion, and your one Salamander with Chain. This, this entire little utility box just gives you an entirely, I guess, different explored realm out here to kind of help you out with what you want to see. And of course, you have the one Fighting Flame Dragon, one Original Flame Swordsman, and two Ultimate Flames down here. Also keep in mind that we're not doing you, no fusion armament anywhere in this deck. All right, everything that we're doing should straight be combo. I mean, post side decking, you bring in your Fenrir's, you have your time cart, you have cross outs, and then of course the power of good old soul release here to help you out with your power cards. All right. What else we got back here? Hey, we have more purely. Now this is what I would consider more of the uh, the standard out here. You know, of course you have the triple Fenrir in the main deck. You gotta love the fact that you know Fenrir and Fenrir. It's free discard. You've got the interruptions up. So I that other build not playing this is kind of cool. Now um, this this is cool. You know, we we see we see these decks tend to want to side cards to help them out. And the fact that we are seeing an actual cross out designator down here with a Kirin to be able to cross this out so your opponent actually cannot. Like Kirin is the one of the craziest cards we could actually have right now in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh. And the fact that we're siding for this to make sure that we don't lose to this. I think this is the only real thing that really scares people right now is just the cure and interruption from the hand. So very interesting to see. <laughs> Good stuff. And our last list here is more rescue ace. Now this is, this looks a lot better to me. This is where you see the one populist you bring in the triple bonfire here. Triple the Abel star feels like a little bit much, but I think that's fine. You know, you obviously want to make sure that you can see the Diabell star, you know, uh, being able to wanted poster set this on up is good. Um, I also see that we're side decking the fire engine and the triple impulse down here. All right. And we also have the solemn judgments. Good stuff. So congrats to everybody that topped this event. The event looks absolutely amazing. And that flame swordsman stuff is really cool. So leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here in the day, guys. 
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.